What's going on guys? Today I continue my Hackintosh hardware series with the Gigabyte H77N Wi-Fi motherboard. This is a mini ITX motherboard that, despite its small form factor, not only handles OS X very well, but packs a good amount of features in the process. Getting right into those features, this board uses socket 1155 processors. This is the most common processor socket on the market and can use core i3, i5, and i7 chips from the Sandy and Ivy Bridge generations. Moving on to the memory, there's two memory slots on board which accept 240 pin DDR3 modules. The maximum amount of memory is 16GB which is sure to satisfy just about everyone out there that's looking for a mini ITX setup. Also on board is PCI 3.0. This allows users to get the maximum speed out of their PCI devices including higher end GPUs. In case you're wondering why this board has Wi-Fi in its name, it's because there's an onboard Wi-Fi mini PCI chip. Unfortunately, the included Wi-Fi chip is not compatible with OS X, but because it's a micro PCI slot, you can easily swap it out with another compatible chip for an onboard wireless solution. The Realtek ALC892 audio chipset is found here, which works great with OS X, even without a DSDT. You also have the standard front panel connector for line in and out. The H77N Wi-Fi also has a good amount of SATA options for the price. In total, there's four SATA ports. 2 SATA 2 and 2 SATA 3. If you're using an SSD for your boot drive, it's great knowing that you'll be able to take full advantage of the great speeds it offers. Most ITX cases don't have room for more than 4 drives anyway, so 4 ports seems like the perfect amount. Getting into the rear I.O., this one is a bit different than most. On the back, we find a PS2 combination port, 2 USB 3.0 ports, dual HDMI ports, 1 DVI port, 2 Wi-Fi antenna connections, dual gigabit ethernet ports, 4 USB 2.0 ports, as well as the various audio ports. When using the onboard HD 4000 graphics, I found that all of the display outputs worked flawlessly. Whether you want to use DVI, either of the HDMI, or even run a dual display configuration with any combination of the two, it'll work flawlessly for you. With that said, keep in mind that no more than two displays can be used simultaneously. The USB compatibility is also very good on this motherboard. I found that USB 3.0 devices work in both the 2.0 and the 3.0 ports. Unfortunately, USB 2.0 devices will only work in the USB 2.0 ports. USB 3.0 ports provide power but will not mount 2.0 devices. Speaking of USB 3.0, I wasn't able to get the onboard USB 3.0 header working at all, even with USB 3.0 devices. Moving down to the dual ethernet jacks, I was able to get both ports working in OS X by installing the Lynx to Mac network kernel extension found in MultiBeast. With that said, it's worth mentioning that if unplugged while booted into OS X, a reboot is necessary to get them functioning again correctly. At the end of the day, I can definitely recommend the H77N Wi-Fi for your Hackintosh. There's more than enough features on board to justify the $100 price tag, all of which make for an extremely straightforward installation process. The freedom to add in a mini PCI wireless card or other device also gives the users some customization options as well. If I had to pick a con for this board, it would be the 4-pin CPU power connection. Since this motherboard is compatible with Core i7 processors, many would like to overclock their processor. With only a 4-pin connector instead of an 8-pin connector, this isn't going to be the board to push your processor on. Putting that one con aside, do yourself a favor and pick up this board. Let me know what you think of the H77N Wi-Fi in the comments right below that like button you almost forgot to hit. I'm at CPUKid on Twitter. Also be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com and I hope to see you guys back here very soon.